be able to control it. So, I have some, have you guys ever heard of something called capping drive? Have we talked about that before? Yeah. So capping drive, it'd be like a boiling pot of water and I put uh, like heat under it and I have the steam going in all directions. So it's a useless drive. A pressure cooker. Yeah, now I put a lid on that. Now that steam starts building and now I have directive drive and I say puck or bring or whatever. So now the drive is actually going into somewhere. <laughs> now what's leaking drive? What's a good example of leaking drive? And you see this a lot with high drive. Barking. Whining. Whining. Barking. So when my dog is leaking, it'd be like a warm soda can uh, bottle and I shake it up and I put a pinhole in it. And it's just that energy is leaking. You throw chewing grass in there? <laughs> you could. Oh, sorry. Spit or you can drink. Or you can untwist the lid and take a little energy out. You can picture that. I'm going to take some of the drive out. So if my dog is leaking drive, which a lot of high drive dogs do. That's why I was doing this one seminar like I'm doing it one in Arizona next week. And it always makes me laugh because this one lady said, you don't understand my dog has too much ball drive. I'm like, that's like saying I have too much money in my bank account. <laughs> I, don't know. I just have so much money, I don't know what to do with it. Now, if she said my dog has more drive for the ball than I know what to do with, I'd be like, okay, so let's work on you. But I want my dog, the ball drive, to be crack cocaine. I want it to be crazy. But I have to discipline you in a way you can't sit there leaking. Which means what? My dog starts leaking, I lift him up, I use a larange, a slip lead, and I say, it's my command, quiet. Right when they're quiet, my bridge, good. And I pay him. I always want my dog to understand a correction leads to drive, never a correction goes down. Can we, sorry, can we go back to quiet? Yeah. Let me train that. How do you work with the introduce that? It's a word. They don't know what it means. When they're eight weeks old, my puck is eight weeks old, nine weeks old, whatever. I'm playing it with the rag. I hold him right under the chin and say, quiet. And I still mark. And I let him have it. It's timing. Quiet. Then, quiet. Good. Good. Yeah. So I teach them how to settle with the toy. That's the first thing. Yes. So I teach them how to settle in your drive. Because, I mean, the the drive on the, the gripping is so important. Um, in, in the old days, I'm talking like 25, 26 years ago, we used to get full points out of boost if our dog was with us. Then they wanted our dog looking at us. Then they wanted the dog looking happily. Now they want looking happily and putting a thimble full on their nose where it doesn't spill off. Thimble full milk, so the head is completely steady. It's gotten so hard. So it used to be if your dog had good biting full points. Now you better have good barking and good biting. Now you better have good secondary obedience within the protection. Now, I mean, they keep separating the pack, which is good, but it making this makes the sport very difficult. I'm happy for on the same field. <laughs> Well, and that's something that is really good where I ask people, I say, what are your goals? And some people that say, my goal is just to have fun. I'm like, okay. Some people that say, I want to compete at a high level. I'm like, because our club is, uh, for nationals, we're sending nine dogs. Uh, eight are first-time handlers. So they're hitting the big stage. I don't know what they're, how their dogs are going to do. We're going to see, but our club it gets pretty competitive where these people want to hit... But I don't ever look, like there's one lady, she said, Joel, in reality, I come to protection once every two weeks. She has two young kids. She goes, I'm just gonna do the best I can. Well, I would never put that down. That's her goal. Just, you know, have fun. But I always tell people, be honest with your goal. One lady, she said, uh, I don't really care how I do. I just wanna have fun with my dog and build this relationship. When she failed in the trial in uh, obedience, she was back by the car crying. And I said, you're not being fair to either yourself, your dog, or you weren't being honest one of the, because you do care. If she would have said, yeah, you know, we'll try to get him next time, I'd be like, oh, you really are just kind of having fun. But I don't think she was being honest with herself. Because I'll tell you now, I care. <laughs> I work too hard, I care. When I'm working that hard for something, I care a lot. Do you cry at your partner? <laughs> In front of my wife only. <laughs> yeah, so. You take a look at where your dog is right now, and you're like, I'm trialing tomorrow. Surprise, you guys, there's a trial tomorrow. And you're trialing tomorrow, you should know where you're losing your points. You should be like, I already know where I'm losing. Um, I'm going to be losing them on focus. I'm going to be losing them on sit-out motion, on chewing on the dumbbell, 
Like, so, most people don't know. How many points Joe, did Joe 